And, of course, Liam, the, the judgment was she wasn't on the money, nor was Kwasi Kwarteng. It all sort of fell apart pretty quickly. But um, a bit of revisionism going on now? This isn't ancient history. It was only in September, Mark. A lot's <laughs> happened since then. But this is now feeding in actively into an increasingly tumultuous debate among Conservative backbenchers and ministers as the spring statement approaches, the budget for all intents and purposes, on March uh, the 15th. Let's have a look at that front page on the Telegraph. Let's just say that my newspaper went big on trust. It was her first proper intervention since she stood down as Prime Minister, bundled out the door. The Telegraph ran a 4,000-word essay yeah. over two pages. You know, my newspaper column every week is about 1,000 words. I was going, you, you, you should be so lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, that's how long this essay was. And in it, she did show some contrition. She said she could have uh, moved a bit less slow, le less quickly, but she was absolutely adamant that the policies she put forward, low taxation, were absolutely right. And she said that a lot of the reason the markets went haywire was because of lax regulation of pension funds and the fact that the Bank of England had raised interest rates by less than expected yeah. just a few days before the mini-budget. Uh, and perhaps timing and, and uh, also uh, the, the way that it was presented and, and communication skills. However, we also remember that part of the, um, the sort of equation, if you like, was the OBR forecast yeah. and, and the, the charge that the government hadn't involved them in, in all the sort of number crunching. It was absolutely a mistake. I mean, I saw Liz Truss before this weekend as she was just finishing the essay and it's absolutely the case i think she acknowledges that she should have involved the obr more in the ramps of the mini budget mm. it was a it was a very strange time her majesty the queen had just died the country was still as it still is rattled by lockdown uh, the economy was feeling very very febrile if if you like but the point she makes in this essay mark and this is not a point in isolation a lot of people think this that Whitehall forecasts from the Office for Budget Responsibility for the Treasury are unnecessarily gloomy mm. and their forecasts become destiny because politicians have to make decisions. They're forced to make decisions based on these forecasts. And the forecasts often turn out to be wildly out of kilter. Let's just have a look at a graphic that I've got here and I'll keep GB News radio viewers informed. So this is a graphic that I put together. On the left there, you see these black bars. These are the forecasts that the OBR made in March 2021, OK? And the blue bars are the actual outcome. And I'll just read out the numbers uh, for, for radio viewers as well as TV viewers. In March 2021, the OBR forecast that income tax and national insurance would raise £128 billion. It turned out to be £142 billion. That's so we did a, better than expected. That, that's an 11% yeah. miss. Corporation tax, the OBR, in March 2021 said £39.5, £40 billion for corporation tax. It turned out, Mark, to be £62.6 billion. They're making a forecast in March for the April to the April that follows. I mean, immediate forecasting. This is not long-range forecasting. Yeah. That's a 58% miss. And here's the big one. The third one, yeah. The third one on the right there of the screen for TV viewers. The OBR said in March 2021 the government would borrow £233, £234 billion. Pounds. It turned out to be £125 billion. In other words, the borrowing prognosis that the OBR put forward was £108 billion pounds out. It was wildly yeah. over gloomy. And that's what frightened the horses, and that's what did for, or did for Kwasi Kwarteng. In that, was she right to hang him out to dry? On, on this and, and make him take the blame effectively. I think in the end that isn't, with all respect, Mark, I d that's process, that's political theatre. That's between her and Kwasi Kwarteng. And by the way, she was extremely warm. Well, they were, they were said to be in lockstep, they weren't were they? Yeah. They yeah. are absolute political yeah. soulmates. They yeah. came in at the same time. They think very s s in a very similar way mm. about the economy. She was very uh, praiseworthy of Kwasi Kwarteng when I saw her before this essay was released and indeed in that essay. The important point, Mark, is can a Conservative Party enact a policy of low taxation or is it hamstrung by Whitehall? And in, that is the point. And in, very quickly, in that point, <laughs> the big thing now, corporation tax and whether Sunak will have to acknowledge not to push that higher. This is a brewing row ahead of March the 15th. The government is nailed on to raise corporation tax. It's been legislated for yep. in April from 19 to 25. 25%, right? A lot of people on the Tory backbenches are now saying, 
keep it at 19. Firms can't take, small firms in particular, sky-high energy bills, supply chain costs, uh, of falling demand, and now this corporation tax bill. A lot of people are saying, reputable people, economists and politicians, if you increase the rate of corporation tax, yeah. you'll end up getting less money. And that the OBR forecasts on this, as they were last year, as I've just demonstrated, are too gloomy. That is the argument. I feel a 4,000-word essay brewing, <laughs> or less. Anyway, thank you for that, and, of course, we'll see what emerges uh, as March the 15th approaches.